got the Typhon Grom on the bench and today we're gonna be taking it from stock to overkill with some seriously powerful parts. We're also gonna be putting some big tires on it, some street tires on it, and if it survives all that, we're gonna put it on 4S. Stay tuned, this is gonna be awesome. I've run the Granite Grom on a less powerful system on 3S and it handled that pretty well, but this is gonna be a lot more power and I'm not sure if even these upgraded parts are gonna be able to handle it. We're just gonna have to find out. First thing we need to do is take off these stock axles. If you haven't seen this before, these hexes are actually held on by the stub shafts. So you need to hold the hex and then remove the stub shaft from the outside. Once that stub shaft is off, the hex comes right off. Time for power tools. I know there's been some concern about these stock drivetrains, and at least in my experience, they can actually handle the stock 2S brushed power just fine. But once you upgrade to brushless, especially if you're gonna go higher than 2S, you really need to upgrade at least the differentials and the axles. Fortunately, these trucks are very easy to work on and getting these differentials out, it's just as simple as removing a few screws. We are gonna be upgrading these shocks as well. I don't necessarily think you need to upgrade them, but I've got the fancy new shocks, so we might as well go ahead and swap them out. I am curious to see if the upgraded shocks will work with these shock cap protectors. Hopefully they will. One thing you'll notice is that these upgraded shocks come with really thin fluid in them and the stock shocks have much thicker fluid. So let's go ahead and put some thicker fluid in these so they'll work the same way. These are really easy to take apart. Just take that spring off and then the shock cap comes off. You might need to use some shock shaft pliers. If you don't have a set of these, I definitely recommend getting them. You can take these apart without marring anything with them. I'm gonna just dump the old shock oil out. I think this is about 30 weight. And we're gonna refill it with some 900 CST, which is around 80 weight. Always important to make sure you make a mess while you're doing this. If you don't make a mess, it's not quite done right. Whenever you're refilling and bleeding shocks, when you go to put them back together, you wanna make sure that you've got the shock shaft all the way up before you put the shock cap on. If you don't do it like this, you'll end up having hydro locking inside the shock and you'll find that when you go to try and push the shock shaft in, it won't be able to push in all the way and that's really not desirable. You're always gonna get a little bit of push out just because when you put the shock cap on, it squeezes everything together and there's not much you can do about that, but this feels just about right. All right, that feels a lot closer to the stock shocks. I'm gonna go ahead and do the other three. Now we've got four shocks ready to go on. Let's get those differentials swapped out. Okay, taking this cover off, we can see the stock differential in here and these stock CVDs. The stock differential and the upgraded differential look fairly similar. The big difference is that the internal gears on this are metal while the internal gears on this are plastic. And then these output cups are also steel, which is a lot stronger than the plastic output cups on the stock ones. These are also fluid filled instead of grease filled. And then we can see that the CVDs are similar as well. The shafts are actually identical, but the out drives are where it's different. These are fully plastic and these are fully steel. This should be a lot stronger. And up Upgrade, all we need to do is just insert these CVDs and then we can install the upgraded differential. And that's all there is to it. I'm gonna get this put back together. These new shocks have a little ball and washer that go in them and I'm not sure if that shock protector is gonna work with that. Yeah, it looks like it'll work just fine. And yeah, that feels just about like stock. That should be good. That looks absolutely beautiful. Let's get the rear done. Out with the old and in with the overpriced, I mean new. She's looking really good, but now the part I'm most excited about, let's overpower this thing. We've got the Micro X2 Censored 4S ESC. Let me know down in the comments if you think this drivetrain is gonna be able to handle 4S with those big tires. And we've got this big 1010 size castle censored motor. This thing's gonna be way more powerful than the stock system. Let's get it installed. The mount for the servo is built into the ESC. I don't have a replacement for that, but I went ahead and 3D printed one. Hopefully this will hold up. We won't be needing any of this anymore. One thing that can be difficult when going from a brush to a brushless motor is knowing what pinion size to use. This is an 18 tooth pinion, but it's hard to directly translate from turns on a brushed motor to KV on a brushless motor. I think this is 26 or 28 turn and this is 4,400 KV. There are some charts you can use online that are helpful, but they're not perfect. I got a 16 and 18 tooth pinion. Let's just go ahead and go with the 18 and see how it goes. 
Whenever you're choosing screws to use for a new motor, make sure that they are the correct length. If they're too long, they can actually damage the motor. An easy way to figure that out is just screw them in and make sure there's plenty of thread available for the motor mount before it actually bottoms out into anything in the motor. Make sure you don't screw that in too hard though, because if you do bottom out on the windings in the motor, you can damage them. Looks like we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming on this chassis to fit this 1010 size motor. This rib here is in the way. That should be easy enough to clear out though. There are several different ways you can do this. I like a pair of flush cutters. It doesn't make for the cleanest job, but it is usually the quickest way to do it. If you just cut the ends, and then give it a cut somewhere in the middle. You can then take a pair of pliers and just twist those pieces out of there. That's pretty good. So as it turns out, this 1010 motor doesn't actually fit in here. I was able to make it fit by trimming this screw boss off on here and on the chassis, but I don't recommend going with this 1010 motor. This is gonna be overkill, and I think they make a 1007 motor that would probably be a lot more appropriate, but overkill is what we're going for, so we got this to fit. Man, that fits like it was made for it. Now I just need to tidy up this wiring and figure out a place to put this receiver. Space is always at a premium on buggy builds, but I think we did a pretty good job getting all the wiring tucked out of the way. I did unfortunately have to take the cover off of this ESC. The only real downside to that is that the cover does hold this wiring in. I do have it tied down, so it should be okay, but we'll just have to see. Speaking of seeing, this thing did 22 miles an hour with the stock setup. Let's throw the stock tires on here, see what it can do now. All right, let's see how much faster this thing is on 2S. Oh, she's already more peppy. Oh, this thing's gonna be scary on 4S. Ah, oh, it feels pretty good. Full throttle. Nice and controllable. One more pass on 2S. Feels really nice. Let's bring it in. All right, 34 miles an hour, not bad. That's pretty good for 2S. Let's go straight to 4S and see what this thing can really do. Oh boy. Whoa, that's fast. Okay, another pass. Okay, that's about half throttle. Okay, we're gonna go one more pass. Whoa. All right, let's check that out. 52 miles an hour, that is so fast. All right, guys, 52 miles an hour is all I could get out of this thing on 4S. This had a lot left in it. I think 60 miles an hour is easily achievable with the gyro and maybe the right tires. That being said, I wanna see how this thing bashes. I think 3S is gonna be the sweet spot for bashing. Let's throw this battery in, go see what it can do. <laughs> Well, as you can see, 3S really wakes this thing up, but I wanna see what it can do on-road. Let's throw these on and do some drifting.
pretty fun though. These tires don't have nearly enough traction for this car's power. It's pretty much just a slide fest. All right, guys, you know what time it is. Let's get 4S, these big tires, take it off the big jump. Well, this will come as a surprise to no one, but I broke it. Snapped one of the front CVDs. 4S with this power system and these big tires is just too much for this little platform. But this same system on 3S, even with the stock tires, is a ton of fun. It's manageable, it's powerful, it stays nice and cool, and it really is a good setup. Speaking of the setup, what we have here is a Mamba Micro X2 ESC, a Castle 1010 4400 KV motor. If you're gonna run this long can motor, you're gonna have to make some modifications to that screw ball that I showed you earlier. This is a FlySky Ant 4-channel internal antenna receiver. And then I've got a 3D printed mount adapter, but you can buy one of these directly from Horizon. You don't have to 3D print your own. Beyond that, we've got the upgraded differentials, the upgraded CVDs, and the upgraded shocks. The differentials and CVDs, I definitely recommend if you're gonna be going big power. The shocks aren't necessary. So that's it, guys. This has been a ton of fun. I love overpowering these things. If you love these kind of videos, make sure you get subscribed and check out one of these.